I'm from Australia. I would like to share my experience with scammers that I had an experience a number of years ago. At the time, I was into sending money to various Christian ministries all over the world. So when I met a man on Yahoo Messenger Christian chat room named Patrick Duke, who told me his testimony about his conversion to Christianity, I was really moved. His testimony told me how he was a lawyer for the late Mr. and Mrs. Bright Williams who had lived in Nigeria as good Christians until their death in a plane crash. His testimony told me how he had collected their money, which added up to $50 million after their death, and he was planning to use this money for himself, but he had to account for how this money was going to be used. This testimony then mentioned how he watched Barry Hinn's ministry and then got down on his knees and gave his life to Jesus Christ. He continued by telling me that God has chosen me to be the beneficiary for the $50 million that he had collected and for the money to be distributed to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. I was keen to further the gospel of Jesus Christ and I accepted. He would message me through email about this and tell me that we must build trust for this to work and what kind of car and house do I own. Through a number of messages and email, I sent the Christian ministries that I would like the money to be set up and set a new bank account that I had planned to have this $50 million sent to. He seemed pleased about me setting up this new bank account and giving him all the names of the Christian ministries that I wanted this money sent to. I also called him on the phone number in Nigeria, and he said it was good to hear my voice. His next move was to give me the phone number of his vault manager named Rowland Antis in London, England, who he said was holding the $50 million in a company in London. I was keen to have the money sent to various Christian ministries and that I had sent to Patrick Duke, the one I met on Yahoo Messenger. So I called his vault manager. I could not get any clear message from his vault manager as to what was happening, but the next day his vault manager emailed me to start the transaction. His vault manager would then send me photos of large amounts of cash in a trunk box and tell me not to show anyone, as these photos are highly confidential. I can now Google large amounts of money in a trunk box and that same photo comes up. Next. Rowulin asked me for my driver's license ID, which I faxed to the number that he gave me. Then, the vault manager sent me an attachment on my email, which was called, referred to as an affidavit to secure safely of the $50 million being sent to me. The vault manager messaged me that I am to send $1,750 US dollars via Western Union for this affidavit to be sent. I then became stressed about this money to be sent because I thought the money would just be sent to me free of charge. I would then message Patrick Duke about how stressed I was and that my family would not be very happy with me if I lost this amount of money. Also that I was not sure if I had enough faith to go through with sending the 1750 US dollars. He then quoted the Bible stating, with faith the size of a mustard seed we can move mountains. And with that, my family would be proud of me if this transaction was done. During this time, I was still stressing about how I was going to send all this money because I did not know how to use Western Union and I did not have that much money in my account at the time. I went on holidays with my girlfriend and her family at the time and the vault manager would ring me up and ask me to send the money. He would give me time limits to send the money and asked if I could send a check, but he would only accept Western Union. I continued to stress about how I was going to send this money, which was followed by the vault manager ringing me up and becoming very aggressive, saying things like, are you serious about this transaction? If you don't send the money, I'm going to get Patrick Duke to find another beneficiary. Patrick Duke would then message me the next day, since I had not paid the money, saying that the vault manager has determined that if he gets another beneficiary, but he replied that God has chosen me and that God has a higher authority. So Patrick Duke said that I was still the beneficiary, but that I had two weeks to come up with the payment. I then took the attachment of the affidavit to the bank to see if they could help me confirm if it was legitimate, but they told me they did not know if it was legit or not. When my stress about this payment increased further, I then showed the attached and the initial message about me being the beneficiary for the $50 million to my cousin. His response was short. It's a scam. 
He then continued to show me the faults in the affidavit on how he could edit things in it, and showed me the real document and showed me that he could not change it by merely trying to type on it. He told me that the scammers can make these things up, like saying they are vault managers or that they have $50 million. But what they can't fake is a real number to the company that they are saying they work at. My cousin would tell me, that guy's probably from Nigeria, and laugh. And I said, hey, he is from Nigeria. He then said, yep, it's a scam. At the time, I did not know about these things being so much in Nigeria. I asked my cousin, is there any chance that this could be legit? His response was no, with a smile on his face. I also called Western Union and told them the whole story. The man working for Western Union replied, don't send them any money. I then asked the man working for Western Union, are you 100% sure that this is fraud? His reply was, they appear as fraud. Then, I checked the words of Bright Williams' plane crash on Google and it came up on scam sites, some of which came up over 4,000 times dated four years back. With this new information, I was then, this is a scam, but I had a new stress. My new stress was, since I had sent my driver's license ID to the scammer, I was worried that the scammer would then use this to access my bank account from his phone. So I went to my bank looking very nervous and worried. When they answered my inquiry, they gave me a funny look, like I was on drugs or something, probably because I was shaking so nervously. And they told me that a driver's license is not enough information to gain access to my account. Knowing that they could not access my bank account, I was more relieved. I then decided, since I've had so much stress over this scam, that I should have some fun. I then messaged the scammer Patrick Duke that I was ready to make the payment, which was followed by constant calls from the vault manager the next morning. I did not properly answer the vault manager's calls because I was not comfortable talking to someone I knew was a scammer. He tried to communicate with me over the phone for a number of hours that morning until he left a message on my phone sounding very happy saying he is calling from the Queen's High Court in London about the affidavit. I knew it was lying because the time in London that the message was sent, it was 1 a.m. in London time. Later after this message, I sent the scammer Patrick Duke on Yahoo Messenger again. He said that I was really holding up the process. Since I did not want to be blunt with him, I messaged him this story about the plane crash of Bright Williams has come up 4,000 times on the internet. He then replied, Do you think someone knows about it? Quick, send the money. To which I replied, some of these were dated over four years ago. He then messaged me that con men are trying to get on on this transaction and for me to send the money quickly. I could see that he was not going to come clean no matter what I messaged him about. As I thought, I had shown the scammer overwhelming evidence that he was scamming. Since he would not come clean, I decided to keep stringing him along on my real account and I made up some fake accounts to bait him with. One of the fake accounts was from Atlanta, Georgia, U.S., and another from Pakistan. He would ask me the same questions on these fake accounts, what type of car I drive, what kind of house I had, etc. Eventually, I think Patrick Duke the scammer realized that he wasn't going to get any money from my real account, so he messaged me that it was my last chance. My friend at work saw this on my email and told me to send him this message. God has revealed to me that you are Mr. Rulin and a pair of frauds and phonies. If you would like to repent from what you are doing, I would love to pray with you. If you do not respond to this message, I will assume you have chosen to burn in hell. To which he did not reply. After this, he continued to send messages to try and scam my fake profiles, to which he would give different names each time of the vault manager was mentioned, until I just got tired of baiting him. Later, I remember a message on my phone, which sounded like Rulin, vault manager scammer under the name Francis, saying that I need to call him back because he had an urgent matter to discuss about my mortgage. I knew that this was also a scam because I didn't have a mortgage. In hindsight, I'm glad that I did not send the scammers any money, but I am still concerned because I sent them my driver's license ID, which could be used. Thank you for letting me share my story. And we'd like to thank this gentleman from Australia for sharing his scam encounter story. Many of the Online scams started with Yahoo Messenger back in the late 90s and early 2000s, and with the upcoming social media explosion, they've gone to places like Facebook and Instagram and dating sites. But this type of scam was one of the original ones that were first used when the internet started to explode. 
Once again, thanks for sharing your story. If you'd like to share your story, you can find us on Facebook under Scamming Scammers Action or drop us an email, scammingscammers at gmail.com. We will respond, we will investigate your story, and then make it into a video. Thanks for watching. Take care.